please come in and sit down. Make yourself comfortable. I'll have to apologize in advance. My voice is getting a little scratchy from some seasonal allergies. So I'll just be speaking in a lower voice. I just want to preserve my voice for as long as I can. So, my name is Calliope, and I am a healer. I am a metaphysical professional, and I'm hoping that I can help you out. Can I offer you anything to drink at all? I have water or a couple different types of green tea. Alright, you can just let me know, okay? Excellent. So, as we're sitting here, I can see that you're holding quite a bit of tension. Are you nervous about disappointment? Or do you have Anxiety? Are you quite stressed at this moment? Okay, that's fine. I don't mean to call you out. I just want to help you as much as I can, okay? So, if you wouldn't mind doing something for me. So, I see that your shoulders are raised up a little bit. They're also rounded forwards. So here we are shortening the muscles along our chest. Oftentimes that can exacerbate any soreness or stiffness we already feel in our chest. And sometimes it can also give us chest pain. So what I want you to do is if you could just lower down your shoulders a bit and roll them back, okay? So just, if you don't mind, I can just press down on your shoulders. It's okay. I'm just going to press down and I'm just going to gently roll the joint back, okay? So keep it down rolled back. We're going to broaden the rib cage. We're going to stretch out those muscles. If you've been curled inwards for quite some time, you may get some stiffness or soreness in this area because those muscles have been shortened. But I want you to try to keep your rib cage open. Keep sitting tall, right? Okay, it's going to be much better for you in the long run. And sometimes it helps a little bit anxiety-wise, stress-wise, instead of our body being weighed down by all of it, to just open up a little bit, okay? Now... Since you had mentioned a bit of stress, if you would like, we can go through a little bit of deep breathing to start with, okay? Just to calm our system down a little bit, get a little acclimated to the environment, okay? I know this is all new, so if you wouldn't mind just taking a deep breath in for me through your nose. And... Exhale through your mouth. How's that? Is that all right? Okay, let's do that a few more times. Take an inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. we inhale, we want to inhale 
into our stomach rather than our chest. Take a big inhale and feel our abdomen rise. And then we exhale fully. Letting our abdomen fall again. Let's do that one more time. Deep breath in for me. And out. Good. It helps if you do a little bit of grounding as well. So perhaps take a look around the room. Look at three different things. Name those three things. We have a painting. We have plant. We have a book. Now pick two things that you can hear. So we might hear little bird calls. We might hear the drone of an airplane. We might hear a little bit of wind. And finally, one thing you can feel. Can you feel your arms either resting on your body, on a chair? Can you feel your butt on whatever surface you're sitting on? Can you feel your back against the surface? Can you feel your skin beneath your fingertips? Okay? Just take note, use all your senses and that helps bring us back to right now. Okay? What an introduction, huh? And I haven't even gotten your name yet. Let's go ahead and, and do that. So, if you wouldn't mind just telling me your name. Okay? And your date of birth. Excellent. Is that your preferred name? And how do you like to be addressed? Okay. Very good. Okay. So, what exactly am I seeing you for today? Mm hmm. Very good. And what exactly are you looking for from my practice? Mm-hmm. Right. Whatever it is that you think that you want to see out of coming to me, what what is that? Okay. All right. I just like to gauge my patient's expectations and then, should they be a little too out of my realm, we can redefine those expectations and manage them. Sometimes they're not very far out at all. And then we can discuss what it is that I can do for them. All the different things that we can look at. So, just note that down. So, a little bit about what I do here. My job is to bridge the gap between treating specific illness or injuries and treating the individual as a whole. Modern day medicine is incredible, but many people feel that they're not being adequately listened to or supported and it's often discouraged to seek medical treatment unless we have something specific, right? So, while prevention is often the best step in managing illness, preventing it from happening in the first place, Oftentimes, we're only supposed to 
see a provider when we're in the throes of said illness. Now, with injury, that's a little different, right? But we still can prevent injuries, you know, things like stretching and making sure we're not overdoing it. So when we treat the person as a whole, we're looking at all of our risk factors, we're looking at our habits, our diet, our exercise, and most importantly, we're also looking at the mental health side of it as well. Physical health and mental health go hand in hand. Oftentimes it's not treated as such, or it can be demonized or scapegoated, which often will keep many people from seeking medical treatment. My job is to help support you as a whole, and it's to be another person that we look at if you're having certain symptoms that are not life-threatening, then we should seek medical treatment anyway. But we're looking at symptoms, and it's another person that tells you whether certain things are concerning, or maybe if it's more stress-related, or if there could be something deeper going on, right? So, I'm just that other person that helps you feel listened to and supported, and I can help you guide you through that process. Oftentimes, when we're on a medical diagnosis journey or medical problem journey, we don't feel like we're always getting the treatment we need or that we're being listened to enough, and I'm here to be of your advocates, and I'm here to help you manage those stresses that come along with it, okay? So, a lot of the treatments that we end up referring people to tend to be more along the metaphysical line or what's known as alternative medicine. These treatments are not meant to treat specific conditions. They're meant to treat you as a whole. What's great about these treatments is even with skeptics, we can see results. I'm sure you've heard of the placebo effect, correct? Yeah, so the placebo effect is even when something is not scientifically verified to treat, for example, chiropractic, but many people swear by it, or acupuncture for pain. You have that anecdotal evidence, but not necessarily the scientific backing. So when we look at that, one thing is that it could be a placebo. Even though it doesn't necessarily work in science, but if it's still bringing you relief, then that's everything, right? So, the placebo effect is something that even skeptics can get, and if it makes you feel more relaxed, if it makes you feel a little more put together, like someone's taking care of you so you can better take care of yourself, then that's everything, okay? So, what you can expect from this particular appointment is we're going to do a little general health examination. I'll ask you some questions about your, your lifestyle, your habits. We can work on a treatment plan. We can work on different options. What exactly those are going to be treating, how it works, and we can set up those appointments should you be interested. How does that sound? Okay, very good. So, I'm going to start with taking some vitals. I'm going to grab some sanitizer real quick. Okay. Okay, so I want to 
to start with taking your temperature. From this point onwards, I am going to need to be touching you for this examination. Is that all right with you? Have your permission to do that? Okay, excellent. So, we'll start with our temperature. Okay. I'm just going to have you open your mouth for me. And lift up your tongue. There we go. And lay your tongue down on the probe there. We're just going to wait until it gives us the little beep, the signal that it's ready. And there we go. Okay. Temperature is within normal limits. Let's take your pulse. Do you have any preference as to which wrist I use? Okay, we'll go ahead and do this. This one side. So I'm just going to place my first two fingers right below a big muscle in your thumb along the radial artery. I'm just going to wait here for a little bit. Okay. So the pulse is a touch high. Is that normal for you? Or are you still feeling some anxiety? Mm-hmm. I also have a high pulse whenever I see any medical professional at all. Always been that way. Always have anxiety about it. So I can understand that. Hopefully by the end of this, you'll feel much more at ease. Okay? Alright. Let's take your blood pressure. start with, I'm just going to pop in my stethoscope. There's a lot of moving parts to getting a blood pressure. Okay, so I'm just going to push that down. And then I'm just going to wrap the cuff around your arm. I'm going to go with this side. running along that artery. Hold the dial. I'm just going to place the stethoscope in the cubital fossa there. Make sure the valve is closed on our on our bulb here. Okay, so it will get quite firm, but it doesn't last very long. For the moment, we no longer need the stethoscope. Okay. Let's see. So BP was 
just a touch high, but as we had mentioned, you're a little anxious, a little under stress. So that's also something that we will just keep an eye on, especially, especially if you don't have a history. Is that correct? Okay, not so much. All right. Yes, I don't see anything here in your file. I'm not seeing any medicines that would mess with that either. Okay. So I want to take a little look at the quality of your hair, of your skin, and of your nails, okay? So this is something that, funnily enough, we don't look at enough, in my opinion, where we find that many warning signs of health problems and general well-being are found in the hair, the skin, and the nails, okay? So if you don't mind, I'd like to just feel your hair a little bit, okay? Just feeling the texture. I just want to feel... I want to feel how dry it is. There might be some oily spots. If it's rather brittle, if it's a little too brittle considering your hair type, there are certain hair types that are obviously more brittle than others. Okay, just want to look at your ends a little bit here. How often do you wash your hair? Do you find that you struggle particularly with dryness or oiliness? Okay. And have you had any problems with your scalp? Such as dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis, psoriasis, anything like that? Alright, so I want to take a little look at your skin. There. I'm just going to use a little magnifying glass here. I want to look at the, at the quality of the skin. Let's see. Do you struggle with certain problems like acne, rosacea, hyperpigmentation, anything like that, any sort of skin conditions. Okay. And is your skin particularly sensitive or not so much? Okay. You say it's usually oily? Well, both can be true at the same time. Some of us can have oily skin, but the surface is still dry, especially if we are if we are washing our skin often and not applying enough moisturizer. Then sometimes it gets even oilier to overcompensate. Some people can be surface dry and have dry skin, surface dry and combination. There's all sorts. But definitely I would be looking at how we're moisturizing. If your skin's oily and you need to wash quite often, Make sure you are replenishing that moisture on top, okay? Let's see. Okay, and if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to 
to see your nails. Okay. Do you happen to use any sort of adhesive on your nails? Or do you add acrylics or gel nails? Anything like that? Okay. look pretty, pretty clear. I'm not seeing any discoloration or speckling or banding. Okay. Good. Take a look at your eyes, all right? Just gonna grab a little light here. That'll help me see a bit better. So, it might be a little bright. I'm not going to shine it where you have to look directly into it. it just helps, it just helps to illuminate a little bit. Okay. There's a touch of redness to the eye. I'm just going to pull down on your eyelid. I want you to look up for me. Pulling down. Okay, and pull down on this side. Look up. Good. And I'm going to pull up. And I want you to look down. Touch red there. That's another indicator of stress and fatigue that are wearing on your body a bit. Okay. So I want you to do a little eye tracking for me. This tip of my pen light here, I want you to focus on it using your eyes without moving your head, I want you to just follow this, okay? Follow to the side. And are you finding that that's hard to do? going to have you keep following this. We're just going to go up and down, up and down, down. Okay, you can go ahead and blink a few times, refocus. All right. So now I want you to look at the wall behind me and then look at my finger here. Look at the wall behind me. Look at my finger. Look at the wall behind me. And look at my finger. Okay. Are you finding that it takes a few moments for your eyes to focus? Right, so when you jump from the wall to my finger, does it go blurry and kind of focus in and out for a couple of seconds. Okay, so when's the last time you've gotten an eye exam? Okay. Do you notice if you happen to 
drive if you're having trouble with your eyes focusing from a sign to the speedometer to the road to the radio do you notice with that back and forth if there's an issue okay you're getting a little bit of double vision there okay so what we're gonna do is I'm going to highly suggest that we have you see an eye doctor, okay? So I have that exact same problem and that's why my glasses here, these have prism in them. My eyes do not work together anymore and so they have a lot of trouble with focusing in and out able to drive anymore because of it, but PRISM works by forcing your eyes to work together and it helps reduce that fatigue as well. If you don't treat those sort of symptoms, they continue to get worse and then you can end up with a much more permanent problem that's a lot more serious. So. We'll have to take a look at that, and really, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's taken, it had taken my eyes maybe three or four days before I felt like I wasn't tripping balls anymore, okay? But it's not too big of a deal. So we're gonna, we're gonna recommend that. Let's take a little look at your lips and your mouth. Wouldn't mind just opening your mouth for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm just going to put this tongue depressor along your tongue here. Look in your throat. Are you starting up with a sore throat as well? Yeah, I can see that. It's a little red. So you deal with seasonal allergies regularly, I would start in on that, on that treatment, okay? I just want to look in your teeth a little bit. What's your diet like? There are a lot of sugars, a lot of acids. Right, so... Should we consume a lot of acid, like tomatoes are one of them, so sauces that tomatoes are in, juices, of course, soda pop. The best thing we can do besides brushing our teeth right after or reducing the frequency that we have those things is drinking some water, swishing it around your mouth, and that helps take off that acidity, keeps it from keeps it from sticking on your teeth and doing more damage. But obviously our best bet is to brush our teeth afterwards, right? Yeah. And then perhaps reducing the frequency we have those things. Okay. All right. When's the last time you've had a dental examination? Recent And they had, they had mentioned the same thing? I'm sure they did. Acid erosion is a huge thing with your teeth, so it makes sense that they focus on that quite a bit. So I'm just going to take a look at your lips here. You bite at your lips a lot? Yeah. See that? Is that a stress thing, anxiety thing? Okay. All right. And would you mind just opening your mouth a little bit? I want to check the corners of your lips. Okay. So it's a little dry. It's a little dry, and your tongue's a little swollen. So, how much water are we consuming on a daily basis? 
not nearly enough, yeah. So the general recommendation is 64 fluid ounces, but of course not all humans are sized the same way or have the same needs. So oftentimes it's drink when you feel like you need to, when you feel thirsty. Obviously, if you're not used to drinking that much, then you may not feel very thirsty. Sometimes people will feel thirst no matter what. Me, especially during allergy season, I could drink gallons and gallons of water and still be thirsty. Just depends on the time, but 64 fluid ounces is a good, a good number to shoot for. And there are quite a bit of different reusable water bottles that list the, the fluid ounce on, on the side of them. You have a 32 ounce, a 16 ounce, or some even have 128 ounce. I mean, that's a big boy, but but that would be a good tool to use to make sure that you're getting enough water. And if you don't drink water because you don't like water, you can always use a little bit of flavor. Also, tea is a good a good way to go as well. So we just want to try to stay away from more salty drinks if we're already dehydrated, like Gatorade or Powerade. We want to stay away from sugary things, Gatorade, Powerade, soda pop, juice, okay? Those can make us more dehydrated. So, more water. <laughs> That's oftentimes what we can tell just about everything. Okay, let's take a little look at your ears. Have you had any issues with your sense of hearing at all? Okay, and any, any pain, any itchiness, fullness, anything like that? No? Okay. I'm just going to grab my stethoscope here. the other side there, right? Just gonna pull the ear up, back, and insert the otoscope into the ear canal. So, it's a little bit of redness in here, but if we're dealing with allergies, Nothing crazy. When's the last time you have gotten your hearing checked? A few months ago? Okay. And what did they say? Okay, so they're gonna follow up with that. They're following that issue. 
So let's take a little look at your lymph nodes and your sinuses, right? I'm going to feel your sinuses first. So depending on if you do have allergies popping up, you might have a little bit of tenderness in here, okay? So I'm going to start along the forehead. You just let me know if this is painful at all. Not so much. Okay. Now along your nose and your cheeks. How is that? Not too bad. Okay, that's good. And let's feel your lymph nodes. Let's start the back of your head, the occipital nodes. Occipital nodes are right along your hairline. Okay, and then we're going to feel preauricular nodes right in front of the ear. And we're going to go to the postauricular behind the ear. While I'm here, I like to feel the parotid gland just in front of and below the ear. Then we go to the jugular digastric. Okay, and up to the submandibular under the jaw. And then the submental. Just rolling the skin here a little bit. Into the neck, we have superficial cervical, deep cervical chain, posterior cervical, and then along the clavicle, we have supraclavicular. Okay. Okay. So, I felt just a little bit of distension right here, so it's possible that, again, allergies or you're fighting something off, whether it's a little spring cold, something like that. So, we'll note that down. And let's take a little listen to your heart and your lungs. I hope by now your your pulse is steadied a little bit. Okay. So let's listen to your heart first. I want you to breathe normally for me. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely slow. You haven't had any issues with your heart, have you? Any family history? No? That's good. That's good. Okay, just around the side here. Okay. Have you seen a cardiologist before? Yeah. Listen to your lungs now. So, if you could just take a deep breath in for me and out. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in. And out. 
deep breath in and out. Good, good, good. Have you had any problems with your lungs at all? Any asthma, any infections, pneumonia? Okay, touch of asthma. And do you take medicine for that? Okay, rescue inhaler. Do you use that often? Okay, haven't in a while. That's good. Okay, I thought I had seen that in your medical history. Okay, so now I'm going to listen to your abdomen and listen to your digestive organs. Okay, so just breathe normally for me here. This one tends to take just a little bit longer. There's a lot more organs to listen to. A lot more real estate to cover. sounded normal and have you had any problems with your digestive system at all? No? That's good. That's good. Okay. So, just really quick, I want to look at your extremities. I'm going to be testing the circulation. You're going to look at your capillary refill on your nails of your fingers and your toes. We're going to look at the muscle tone. We're going to do some reflexes as well. Okay? So I'm going to look at your at your fingers here. I'm going to press down on each nail and release. Do you have any problems with your joints at all? Knees are a bit tricky sometimes. Okay. And you've dealt with some carpal tunnel. Okay. Do you still deal with that? Okay. So that is something that we can look into physical therapy. This carpal tunnel can be managed without getting surgery involved as long as we catch it early enough and we're proactive about it. Okay, I'm just going to feel around the joints while I'm here. You let me know if there's any pain or tenderness. I'm not feeling any swelling. They're not, there's no hotness. No skin changes. Everything feels about the same temperature, which is good. Okay. So would you mind just rolling your wrists a little bit for me? Yep. Just roll them around. Huh? How is that movement? Okay. So you get a little bit of twinging in your dominant hand. Let me note that down. I'm going to look into physical therapy. All right. Now let's look at the muscle tone here. Oh yeah, I can feel in the base of your thumb. Sometimes we have the muscle wasting a bit. When we're dealing with carpal tunnel, with that compression of the nerve. And your 
forearms, those muscles are a little tight. Yeah. And what about upper arms? That's sore there. Okay. Do you do any sort of manual labor? Anything like that? Not really. Okay. Yeah, it's a good thing we'll discuss with your primary about exploring that. It's not so bad on the on the non-dominant. Okay. So I'm gonna look at your legs and your feet. I'm gonna look, as I said before, capillary refill on your toes. Just checking the general circulation. Okay. And how are the joints on your toes? Not too bad. I feel around your ankle and turn it around a little bit. How is that? Not too bad. Yeah, I seem to be, be in good health. I'm not really getting any clicking or anything like that. That's good. Okay. And let's look at the legs. You've got good muscle tone here. Do you run or do you do a lot of walking? Some walking. It's good. It's good to hear. And the knees here. You said they give you a little bit of issue sometime. Okay. When is that, usually? <laughs> okay, after you've done quite a bit of stairs. Okay. So we'll keep an eye on that issue then. If it only bothers you once in a while file that away and should anything get any worse we'll we'll get on that okay all right muscle tone is good we're gonna keep an eye on your knees okay and let's go ahead and check some of your reflexes here so my reflex hammer I'm going to start at your feet. We're going to check Babinski's reflex with the blade, okay? I'm just going to run this along the edge of your foot. Okay, the other. Good. And then we're going to tap on your Achilles tendon behind your foot, right below your ankle, okay? Let your, let your feet just hang for me. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. And knee jerk reflex. I'm going to have you just let your legs hang freely. Okay. Good. Excellent. And let's go ahead and do the biceps here. I'm going to have you relax your arm for me. And I'm just going to put my thumb right in the crook of your elbow. My hand's going to wrap around your elbow. We're just going to tap on my thumb. Good. And the other side. Wrap around the elbow. Thumb in the crook of the elbow. Good. We're going to do the triceps reflex. I'm going to hold your arm up, right? I'm just going to be tapping right back there. Okay. We're going to bring our arm up. Just let that hang freely. Good. Back down. We'll go up with this one. Okay. Let it hang freely. Okay. Excellent. Reflexes are all intact. So that'll do it for our physical examination. We had mentioned that we want to look into seeing an eye doctor. We've looked into the 
physical therapy regarding your wrist. We have a note about your knee. We've talked about your asthma, and that's currently properly managed. Okay. We need to work on having more water in our diet, right? Okay. But everything else seemed to be seemed to be a okay, right? We had a few possible seasonal allergy indicators, but that's something that, that we can manage pretty easily without further intervention. Although if it does get to be worse, if it gets to seriously impact your life, your work, what have you, then we'll, we'll talk about that more in depth, okay? So, how are you feeling so far about our exam and what we found? Is there anything that you believe needs to be brought more to my attention? Is there anything that I may have skipped over that you're concerned of? Okay, so, so far, everything, everything has uh, been addressed that needs to, okay? So let's talk about treatments. So we had already said we're going to look at physical therapy and the eye doctor, right? So what we're talking about with treatments is this is what's going to be treating your body, your mind as a whole. So based on what we have here, really think that we want to focus on stress management and anxiety relief. There only seems to be a couple of things where we could go into pain management. We could look into massage or chiropractic in the future for those sort of things. But to start off, I really want to treat you as a whole. We're going to kind of dip your toes into the water, okay? So one of my favorites is auriculotherapy, and this is also called ear acupressure. And what happens in an auriculotherapy session is you are your technician, your whoever's doing your treatment, right? They'll look at your ear, Oftentimes, they'll palpate the ear, and they stimulate different points. They can do this with a little tool, and they can also attach ear seeds, which continue to stimulate those points. So, if you have specific concerns, they can stimulate those specific points, or they can feel around your ears and feel for what they believe you need based on what your ears are telling them, okay? I'm obviously making it a lot more simpler than it is just to summarize, okay? So that's a good full body treatment. It's extraordinarily relaxing, really brings the heart rate down, really helps with that anxiety and that stress. We can also look into acupuncture in the future. Some people get really skeeved out by the needle aspect. The needles are, I believe they're about as thin as a hair. So they're very, very, very thin. And some people say you can't feel them. Some people say it's like a mosquito bite, but maybe not even quite that painful. So that's something that we can look at in the future, but I think we can start with the auriculotherapy and get you just accustomed to that style of therapy. Another thing we can do, I like to just suggest this to, to anybody, is something that's a little fun and can get us thinking a little bit, is a physiognomy reading. 
or face reading, okay? So you are your face reader, rather, will look at your entire face and they can read what your fortune is more inclined to be in certain aspects of your life. Sometimes they can also detect possible health problems, that sort of thing. So that's something that's a little, a little bit of a fun thing to look at should you be interested. Another full body treatment is a Reiki healing. Reiki is an energy healing modality and that will cleanse out your chakras, helps pull negative cords from your aura. It's a whole, it's a whole deal, right? And that's an excellent full body treatment that helps support your own energy, helps kickstart that healing so your body has the energy to heal. We have Twina massage as well, which is a more specific type of massage. It's based on the Chinese Twina. That one's a fun one to start looking into some of those more specific massage modalities rather than just Swedish, okay? And lastly, especially for that stress and anxiety, we can look at a vagus nerve massage. Your vagus nerve is one of your cranial nerves and it's got its little, little nerve endings in pretty much everything on your body. I mean, we're talking your heart rate, your swallowing, it's, it's all over the place. You can access your vagus nerve right by the ear and your vagus massage therapist will, will access those points and you can really feel yourself start to calm down, your breathing eases, your heart rate eases, okay? So that's a good one to just learn how to access those points and get a bit of a manual shut off on anxiety and stress, okay? So those are some of the different treatments that we can start with. Was there anything that really stood out to you? Okay, so regulotherapy we can do. Okay, have the physiognomy, why not, right? And Reiki. Okay, so three is good to start with. Now, I'm going to get into contact with our providers here and we'll set up some appointments and I'll run them by you and make sure that the appointment works for you. And I'm going to contact, and I contact your primary, I think, about the wrist issue, okay? And I want you to try to set up an appointment with an eye doctor, all right? Is there anything you have questions about? Any concerns? I can definitely give you a list of preferred providers if you would like as well. People we've worked with in the past and who who are amiable to work with us as well. Again, my job is to bridge that gap between treating a specific issue and treating you as a person. So if I can get all your health providers on board, then that can help us if you have an issue later on that either we have something that we need to see a specialist about, maybe it supersedes specialty. I'm just another person that helps to support you and helps you to figure out where you should go regarding health concerns 
while also looking after you as a whole, okay? All right, I know it's a lot of information. I've got this all written up and I can send it in an email for you or if you would like, I can have a hard copy. Email's fine. Okay. So I can email this to you and then you won't, you won't be floundering. Okay? All right. Is there anything else I can do for you at all? All right. That's quite enough. Okay. So thank you so much for coming into my practice. I hope that together we can get you on a path to wellness. We can reduce some of your stress, some of your anxiety, and we can really, we can really get you to the best place you can be. Okay? Thank you so much. I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night. Goodbye now. Hi, this is your healer, Kalei B, calling about some possible to be taking care of your treatment today. How are you doing today? <laughs> yes, I know it's quite odd, isn't it? Yes, we have a string of over a hundred degree temperatures. It's not going to end anytime soon, I'm afraid. Before this, we had only had one day that was above 80 degrees. <sighs> Gotta love the Midwest, huh? <laughs> I hope by the time you leave this treatment, you feel a little more cool and collected. You feel even just the littlest bit better, okay? All right, so if I remember correctly, your profile said, right, so you booked a nausea treatment, is that correct? Okay, so do you know much about nausea? Okay, I can explain. No problem. So, nausea or nauseum 
is an Ayurvedic treatment. It's meant for detoxification and it addresses many concerns to deal with the head or the respiratory system. So nausea can be used to treat headaches or migraines, allergies, brain fog, anything to do with the head or the respiratory system. Now Ayurveda is traditional Indian medicine. So it has similarities to traditional Eastern Asian medicines. For example, the terms channels and marma points used in Ayurveda could be synonymous with the terms meridians and acupuncture points that are commonly used in traditional Chinese medicine. So, if you know a little bit about meridians or qi, acupuncture points, it's very similar to what we're going to be working with today, okay? These different modalities, these different sets of traditional medicine have been around for quite literally thousands of years and used by many many different people. Now, with the nausea, this is a treatment where we use medicated oil and we give you a little bit of a massage as well as popping a few drops inside your nose. These medicated oils are made with ingredients that are safe for humans, that are completely edible, and we wouldn't put anything inside your body that your body could not have, okay? Ayurveda uses many oils in its practice and often will use oils both on the outside of the body as well as inside the body, okay? Now the drops we use inside the nose, they shouldn't give you any discomfort. You're not going to feel like you're breathing water or you're drowning. It's a very small amount, but it'll help to unclog your sinuses and brighten up your mind a bit, clear your headaches, and clear your respiratory system. Okay? Alright. Any questions so far? Okay. You just let me know at any point, alright? I know it's not something that Western alternative therapy usually deals with, so some of the concepts are a little different, right? So just let me know if you have any questions. So I'm going to sanitize my hands real quick and then I'm going to tie your hair back. So I'm just going to be tying your hair back in just a moment. So I'd like to ask your permission to touch you. Is that okay with you? Okay, excellent. Okay, so I have a little hair scarf here. So I'm just going to bring that around and then we will just tie this above your head. There we go. How is that? Is that all right? Okay. Is it too tight or is that okay? Okay. Not 
that's good. Very good. Okay. So now I'm going to cleanse your face with a cleansing balm. Now, this is going to help melt away any dirt, dust, debris, little bits we just accumulate over the day. Applicator stick, pop some on my hand. Okay. I'm just gonna run this between my fingers and then I'm going to distribute it along your face. Okay. So I'm just going to run this on your face. So the way the cleansing balm works is we rub it into the skin. And then we take a few drops of water and that emulsifies it and helps it break down the dirt and dust and whatnot even further. And then we, we wash it away. Okay, I'm just gonna get under your neck here. I'm just gonna take a couple of drops of water here. Doesn't take much, just a little bit. I'm just going to pat that along your face. Okay. Very good. All right. And now we'll work that. There we go. This is where it starts getting a bit of a lather. This is where it emulsifies. Down the nose, down the nose, down the nose. Okay, I'm gonna have you close your eyes for me. And I'm just going to gently run that along your eyes. So this is some of the most gentle cleanser that I've ever used and I've even had this on my eyes while I was wearing contacts and it doesn't irritate the eyes at all. I mean maybe if some water ran into your eyes but cleanser itself is extraordinarily gentle. All right, this is where we take a little wet tissue here. And then we just take off the cleanser. There we go. So the thing with cleansing balms is you can't really just wash them off, or rinse rather, you have to physically remove them because it'll look like you got everything, but then if you run a tissue along your face, you'll pick up all the dissolved dirt. So we gotta make sure to actually take off the balm. Okay, so the good thing about this is that you don't need to use a moisturizer after. We are going to be putting some facial oil on your face, so we don't need any anyway. But since it's so moisturizing, you can wash it off and continue on with your day if you need to. Very hydrating. Okay. So let's see here. All right. Here we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get. 
hit just a little bit of oil and we're going to palpate the marma points along your face. So remember I said this is like acupuncture or acupressure points, okay? These are designed to open the energy centers around your upper body. I like to get just a little bit of oil, more for the aromatic quality of it, just so you have a little bit of scent to further relax with, okay? So I'm just going to press down and hold these marma points. I'm just working along in a specific sequence. And just stimulating all those points. for me. Just relax the best you can. And you can close your eyes or keep them open. Doesn't matter either way. Whatever makes you the most comfortable. That's the most important thing. This is where we bring in a different kind of oil. And this oil is meant to balance. Just a little bit. Has a bit of a different scent to it. I'm going to take a little smell here. I'll just hold my hands. Yeah, very herbal, definitely, <laughs> but kind of an earthy, earthy woodsy sort of scent to it. So now we're going to do a little bit of a facial massage, okay? So I'm going to distribute the oil on your face. Now, when I say balancing oil, I mean that it's meant to balance the left and right hemispheres of your brain. It's meant to bring your mind into balance. It's supposed to relax you, okay? So, I'm just going to work circular motions and work our oil into the skin. Just like that. There are certain ways to conduct treatment, specifically with massage. Oftentimes, there is a specific direction to go. And oftentimes, it's in a circular direction. How is this pressure for you? Sensation. 
present here in this moment. Just allow me to take care of you here. direction, a specific way. And you can't forget the neck here. I'm going to make sure that my pressure is a lot lighter on the neck. I don't like to go over the throat at all. Unless I'm just transitioning from one side to the other. to let you have a little steam treatment now, okay? So, I'm going to be placing a cover over your eyes to protect them, and we're going to be using a bit of steam, and I have a bit of eucalyptus oil as well, and that will help open up your nasal passages and let the oils penetrate the skin a little better, okay? So, I'm just going to grab one of our steamed towels here, okay? And I'm going to lay this over your eyes. So, I'm just going to bring over our steamer, and then we'll let that wash over your face for a few minutes, okay? Bring that over, and we're going to just turn that on, okay? And I'm going to grab some of our eucalyptus oil. I'm going to pop a couple of drops into my hand. Okay. And I'm just going to put my hands under your nose, okay? You have a little bit of breathing room here, but you can definitely smell that, yeah? Good. Menthol is so good for opening up your airways. I use it anytime I shower when I've got some allergies or colds going on. It really helps unclog your passageways. So, with this eucalyptus oil, I want you to take a deep breath in for me and inhale the oil's scent. Deep breath out of your mouth. Good. Deep breath in. And 
deep breath out of your mouth. Deep breath in, deep breath out of your mouth, deep breath in, deep breath out of your mouth, last one, deep breath in, Deep breath out of your mouth. Good. Okay. I'm just going to wipe off my hands here. Okay. And we're just going to give it a minute longer with the steam. Going to grab our nausea drops. Just going to be taking this bottle. This bottle hasn't been opened for anyone except for you, though so you're the only one who will have this oil, this dropper, anywhere near your nose, okay? And I'm going to take this bottle and we're going to warm it up so that you're not having cold oil go up your nose, right? And we'll just go ahead and take off the cover over your eyes, our steam towel. All right, there you are. Okay. So I'm going to remove the excess oil. I'm just going to use a little bit of rose water for this. We're not going to do the whole cleansing balm thing. There we go. Okay, so let's grab some of our rose water here. Okay. And now I'm going to take off the excess oil. So, what's left on your face is just excess, what was meant to be absorbed into the skin has already been absorbed. And this just makes it a little easier so that not sitting with a face full of oil. we do the nausea, all right? So our bottle's warmed up, which should be closer to body temperature. And what we're going to be doing is I'll have you take a few deep breaths, and then on the last deep breath, I'll have you hold your breath. You can still breathe through your mouth if you want, but take care not to breathe through your nose yet. And then we'll have you inhale the little drops, okay? I'll be applying them right inside your nasal passages, and then we'll have you inhale, okay? So if you could just take a deep breath in for me. And out. Deep 
breath in out deep breath in and hold for me going to rub that side of your nose. Okay, we'll do a little bit massage. Coat the inside of your nose there. How's the sensation? Okay. Yeah, see, it's such a negligible amount that there shouldn't be any discomfort. Just helps lubricate the nasal passages and helps work from the inside out. Okay, good. Now, I want you to take a real sharp sniff in. Like that, okay? Can you do that? There you go. Alright, good. We're going to do another round of deep breaths. And then we will put the nausea oil in the other nostril. Okay? Take a deep breath in for me and out. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in. Hold. Okay, and breathe in. Good. And I'll just rub that other side. There we go. There. Okay. Take a deep sniff for me. There you go. Okay. So... How does that feel? Okay. You can almost feel it in the back of your throat. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's all it's all connected. So I imagine that oil is now traveling down, going down to your respiratory system, right? So, since we've done so much work with your, with your nose, with your head, we want to bring balance to the rest of your body, okay? So, in Ayurveda, oftentimes that means that we massage the hands and the feet with oil, and that's what I'm going to be doing with you, okay? I'm not going to let you slide out of here with oily hands and feet, okay? All right, so let's get some of our oil, and I'll ask to see your hands. Okay, so if you could just hold your hands out for me, and I'm just going to... Distribute the oil and then work with one hand. We rub in our specific direction, our circular motions. this. 
soothing. <laughs> good, 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 good. How's your nose feeling? A little clear? Yeah. Oftentimes our noses are just a little more stuffed up than we realize. Then when they clear, then it's a whole different world, huh? Other hand here. It's a very warming massage, huh? A lot of energy we generate, creating a lot of heat, even with the oil helping to ease the friction. I'm going to be moving down to your feet. So I'm just going to scooch. Let's get some more oil. Okay. I'm just going to coat your feet. switch to the other side, the other foot. Let me just dab off your hands and your feet, okay? Get off the excess oil, anything that hasn't been absorbed. Nausea treatment. Now, 
since I put so much oil on your face, even though we cleanse with the rose water, if you would like, I can give you another round of that cleansing balm if you tend to have pretty oily skin. Yeah, it's no problem. You can do that right now. new applicator okay You dry here. And now that concludes our nausea treatment. Let me go ahead and take off your hair wrap here. Okay, there we go. All good. And I have your bottle of nausea oil here. So as I said, this is just for you. So if you want to do the nausea treatment at home, perhaps when you have a stuffy nose, then you're more than welcome. It's five drops on each side. That's for you. So thank you so much for coming to the Kailu Wellness Retreat for this Ayurvedic nausea treatment. I really hope you enjoy. Thank you. Bye now.
My name is Calliope, and welcome to your auriculotherapy appointment. Now, auriculotherapy is a type of alternative treatment that works by palpating and stimulating different acupressure points on the ears. So it is quite similar to ear acupuncture, ear acupressure, and ear reflexology. So I have a little chart here that I'd love to show you. This is our reflexology chart. This is what we use to map out all the different points of the ear. So in auriculotherapy, we look at the ear as if it were an upside-down baby in the womb. With the head here, we have the neck spine all the way down. So for example, you have the eye right here, the chest right in this area, we have the elbow, the abdomen, the forehead, and when we get into the organs here. Then we have the endocrine glands here, the adrenal glands, we have the pancreas and gallbladder here, we have the sympathetic nerve, sciatic nerve, there's a point right here called Shen Men. So there are so many different points that we can palpate and assess for any problems. So I use a tool similar to this one. This one has a spring-loaded mechanism and on you, I think we're going to use We use a little, a little stimulation tool like this. This one is not spring-loaded. And we will just press in to each point. And if there is some tenderness or pain in that point, we may have another look at that. We might see if that's something we need to treat. So when we talk about treating the ear, we talk about using these, these little ear seeds. So these are tiny little seeds that have an adhesive backing, and I would pull this off and I would attach it to the ear at whatever point we deem necessary. And these can stay on for about three to five days. And they work by consistently stimulating the point on the ear. And if you feel like you need a little bit more stimulation, you can always rub on that point and press in the ear seed a little deeper. So, there are some general, general treatment guides depending on your particular malady or whatever you wish to focus on. We have fatigue here 
in which we'd press a seed to Shenmen, the kidney, and the adrenal gland. For insomnia, we have Shenmen, the kidney, gallbladder, stomach, liver, spleen, hypnogenetic acupoints, heart, endocrine, and subcortex, or some may also call that the brain point. So there are quite a few different treatments, set treatments, for different ailments, but I like to get a little bit of a measure of what you're feeling by stimulating those points on your ear and then we'll figure out what points would be best for you to receive the ear seeds on, okay? You have any questions so far? Yes, you don't have to do absolutely anything save for just sit here quietly and let me feel around your ears a bit. Okay? Excellent. So, I'm gonna sanitize my hands. Just press around the points of the ears and then when we figure out what points we wish to place the ear seeds on, then I may do a quick little cleaning of your ear so that that adhesive can stick a little bit better, okay? So from this point, of our treatment. Is that okay with you? Do I have your permission to do that? Excellent. Thank you. So, I like to start on this side, if you don't mind. Okay? So, I'm just going to take a look at the ear real quick and just make sure that there isn't any Just take a quick peek at the other ear and just make sure that they are clear and able to receive a regular therapy. Okay, looks good. So, I'm going to just use our tool. to press along the points oftentimes it's almost an odd feeling the first time you get it done because it's very difficult to hear up on the neck, the cervical spine, to the thoracic, you just let me know if there's a point 
and is particularly tender. Alright, so right here, that would be your kidney point. So let me just Okay. We'll keep working. Anything else so far? No? Okay. Just let me know. Okay, right there. Right there. So that is our endocrine point. Okay, so kidney and endocrine. Right there. Okay, so that is your brain point. Brain, kidney, and endocrine. Anything else? Okay, so those three points were tender on this side. So we have your brain, your kidney, and your endocrine glands, okay? So I'm just going to be doing that process on the other side, okay? so far? Okay, interesting. Let's keep going. Just taking a quick second with each point to show breath relief. Breath. 
So that corresponds to your occiput. Right? Interesting. So Shen Men, occiput. There as well. Okay, that would be our forehead. Okay. Okay, and another one. Alright, that was that was the ox. going. Just a little bit more. Nothing else? Okay, good. So, that's interesting that we had the kidney, the endocrine, the brain point on this year. On this year, we had Shen Men, we had the forehead, we had the occiput, we had the temple, right? Was that correct? Okay. So, what it feels like with the different points that we've come up with, Sounds like your body is dealing with some head pain, perhaps headaches, tension in the head area, especially in the occiput behind the head. And it also feels like you're dealing with some low energy. Does that, does that seem correct with you? Okay, very good. So, we're going to stimulate some points with our ear seeds, and we hope that that makes a world of difference for you. So, I'm going to just get a little bit of our alcohol solution. This both helps to clean the area, to sanitize it, as well as dry it out a little bit so that your skin oils don't interfere with the adhesive on our seats so that they stay on longer, okay? So, let's see. I'm just going to take a little bit of that. Okay, and let's go ahead and just wipe the ear real quick. Good. Excellent. So, give that a moment to dry. And in the meantime, we'll get our seeds and we will get the little tweezers here these help me pull off the seeds as they're a little bit difficult they're really on there so these will help me lift that little that little bit and then we will pop some seeds on your ears okay all right All right, so your ears look pretty dry. So we're going to start by just pulling out one of these seeds. It's a little tricky. There we go. Just like that. 
And then we're going to place this one right here on the kidney area. Okay. Just like that. How does that feel? Just a little bit odd, yeah, because you have something stuck on your ear, but I promise you'll get used to that feeling pretty quickly. And then let's do the brain point. Okay. Right there. I'm just going to lightly press those. Okay. And let's do our others here. Occiput. And I think we're going to do the adrenal glands and the brain point on this ear to finish it out. Let's just press those in, make sure they're secure. Okay, so we have four on this side and five on this side. So as I said before, you can leave those on for three to five days. If you leave them on longer, they start to look a little gross. So 
I would just take them off by then. You can do all your normal activities, you can shower, you can swim, whatever you like to do, you can still do that while wearing the ear seats. And whenever you'd like, you can just feel along those seeds and stimulate those points. And I hope that they give you a great deal of improvement in your symptoms and help you feel a little better, okay? Any other questions for me? Excellent. So, thank you so much for coming to me for this auricular. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night. Thank you. Bye now. Hello there and welcome to your shiatsu massage appointment. My name is Kalaipi. I'm going to be taking care of you today. How are you doing today? Okay. Well, I hope by the time you leave this shiatsu massage, you feel even just the littlest bit better. Okay? All right. So, what do you know about shiatsu massage? Sounded good, yeah. If you'd like, I can tell you a little bit about shiatsu. Excellent. So, shiatsu is a Japanese style of massage. It's an offshoot of the traditional type of Japanese massage called anma. She, the first part shiatsu means finger and ats means pressure. So, translated, shiatsu means finger pressure. So, shiatsu bears a lot of similarities to other eastern types of massage, alternative medicine, and it looks a lot like Thai massage. For example, they both have a similarity in that you can use a rocking type motion in both of them. Use a lot of stretching as well. They're both traditionally done on the floor. Now, today, we're going to be using a table for you. This is for accessibility for me, okay? But generally, it's done on the floor on a futon, okay? This is a massage that's done fully clothed, and we're not going to have any oil at all, all right? So with shiatsu, some of the main points that we use is first, finger pressure, like the word says. We use a lot of palming and thumbing along the different meridians. This is part of many Eastern styles of thought. The body has meridians that chi or energy flow through, so with Shiatsu, oftentimes, we're working along the meridians. We also use a perpendicular pressure in which I use my body weight and I'm coming down straight over you. Rather than pushing in, pulling out, it's a straight down. As I mentioned before, there also can be different types of stretching in which we hold one joint. For example, we have one hand on the shoulder, one hand on the hip, and pull apart. So you have that stretching along the back. 
do that on the other side, you can do that from the top of the spine and the bottom and pull apart. So we're going to be working with quite a few different techniques. The type of massage that I have with you is going to be less about stretching and more about that thumb pressure, that perpendicular pressure along your meridians, okay? All right, any questions so far? No? Okay, so I'm just going to sanitize my hands real quick. And for this massage, I am going to need to be touching you. Is that okay with you? Do I have your permission to do that? Excellent. Thank you. So, the massage that we have for you today this is done in a supine position. So you are going to be lying face up. So I will be visible most of the time. I might come out of your field of view a little bit, but I'll be telling you what's going on the whole time. If anything feels uncomfortable or painful, please let me know so we can stop, okay? All right, so the first thing that we start with is what's known as a Hara diagnosis. Now, the Hara is your abdomen, it's abdomen in Japanese. So, in traditional Chinese medicine, oftentimes we look at the tongue and diagnose through the tongue and through the pulses. Whereas with Japanese, we focus on the abdomen. Now, I have a little... I have a little diagram I can show you here. Just give me just a moment. There we are. So, if you could see this here. This is a little drawing representation of your abdomen. We have different Hara zones. For example, the heart, right at the bottom of the rib cage, right where the sternum ends, right up in there. A little bit more in towards that area. Right under it, we have the heart protector. We have the gallbladder, liver, stomach, triple heater, or st stomach, triple heater, heart protector, and the other lung right here. We have the spleen, the kidney, the bladder. We have the large intestines, those two areas, and the small intestines. So I'm just going to be feeling around, and these points, should I find something, don't necessarily mean that that specific area is having a problem. For example, if I feel something in your heart, that doesn't point to heart disease, okay? It's more of, it's more of a concept and a group of potential issues or dysfunction or imbalance rather than being literal. Okay? All right. So, with that, I'm going to be feeling your abdomen. It's going to be quite light, might even be very relaxing. I'm just basically floating my hand and feeling around. And I'm looking for if there's any areas that are hot, that are cold, anything that looks sunken in, something looks swollen. There's mostly in terms of the Hara diagnosis, we're looking for excess or deficiency with the organs, the meridians, 
and what have you, okay? So we're going to get you all set up. We'll start with the Hara diagnosis, and then after that, the first place I work on is your legs, okay? Let's go ahead and get you all set up. Hey, how you doing? Good? Okay. So when we start with feeling around your abdomen, I have a little seat right here that I'm going to be sitting in. But throughout the treatment, I will be pretty much all around you, okay? But I'll let you know where I am in case you can't see me, okay? Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and sit down here. Alright, and we are going to start with the with the abdominal diagnosis here. So, I'm going to feel around here. When we're working with shiatsu, the practitioner should be parallel to your body so that we're not needlessly putting weight on the abdomen so that we don't make you uncomfortable. And I'm just going to lightly lay my hand on your abdomen. And I'm not pressing. Just very lightly feeling the upper hara. And then the lower hara. And this gives me a good gauge of how your body's doing, how your meridians are doing. Just checking in a little bit. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start with your legs here. So one of my hands is known as the mother hand. This is often our guiding, our support hand. Whereas the other one is known as the messenger or the working hand. So I'm going to have one hand upon your hara, upon your abdomen, and my working hand is going to be palming down your leg. Okay, so I'm going to be working the outer portion of the leg from the midline, the meridian, down. Now the guide that we're using is the stomach meridian. And when I get to the knee, then I place my mother hand on your knee while the working hand works down your leg. And I can squeeze your foot a little bit. <laughs> and then I'll put my mother hand back on your hara. And then I'm going to work with our thumb pressures. I'm just going to be pressing in to your leg with my thumbs, pressing in along the meridian, each space about two fingers apart, putting perpendicular pressure on the meridian, and moving my mother hand to your knee. So I can work down the lower leg. How is this feeling so far for you? Okay. Just giving your foot a little, <laughs> a little squeeze here. Okay. 
Okay. Now just let me let me move around a little bit. Where do we turning our attention to your foot here? So with the foot. I'm going to be taking my mother hand and I'm going to be just grabbing your foot below the ankle and then with the working hand, the messenger hand, I'm just going to be rotating the ankle in little circles here. It's very relaxed. You can close your eyes if you want to. Just allow yourself to relax. Okay, and now I'm going to be moving to right in front of the feet. And I'm just going to be taking your foot in both of my hands here. And we're going to open the foot here. So it's almost like, almost like I am creating space, pulling apart the bones a bit, creating a little bit of open space there. Kneading the foot, stretching it open a little bit. And then I'm going to be taking your foot, come back a little bit here, and I'm going to be supporting your foot with our mother hand. And with the other hand, I'm just going to do our thumb pressures, perpendicular pressure along the foot, in between the bones, along the tendons. When I get to a toe, then I rotate it a little bit and give it a little pull. Rotate the tongue, pull. Shiatsu is supposed to be relaxing for both the client and the practitioner. There's a focus on making the body very relaxed. And then we're going to need open your foot a little bit more. I'm just going to let that come back down. And then I'm going to be coming around to the other side so that we can work on your other leg. In just a moment. So now we have the mother hand coming back to the hara and our working hand palms down the front, the outer edge of your leg. How is this pressure for you? Okay, very good. Just working down stomach meridian and then placing my mother hand on your knee and while the messenger hand works down, works down your lower leg Palming down and then giving your foot 
a little squeeze. <laughs> Some nice pressure on the foot. And then my mother hand comes back up. And then we work the stomach meridian with the thumb. Other hand comes to the knee. Just thumb pressing down the leg. And then giving your foot a little squeeze here. Now, if I come back around like this, then I can hold on to your foot just below the ankle. And then I'll be taking your foot and just rotating it to and fro, gentle rotations of the foot. And then we come back to the front so that we can open up the foot. Take your foot in both hands and just pull open the foot a bit, knead it open. Kneading it. And then one hand supports the foot while the other one uses the thumb pressures along the outside of the foot to start. Kneading or pressing, rather, along the meridian there, rotating the toe, and giving it a little pull. Working in between the tendons, in between the bones, rather, along the tendons. Okay, rotating the toe, giving it a little pull. Working down the foot. When we are finished with the leg, then we come to work the chest and then the shoulders. Pulling the toe, rotating and pulling at the toe. And then opening your foot back up. Or kneading. Creating some space in the foot. So now I'm going to be coming up and we are going to be working first along the rib cage. So here we're just going to knead along the rib cage a little bit. Just a little bit of pressure here. And then using the sides of my hands, 
I'm going to be pressing in on either side of your sternum. How is this? Sometimes it can feel a little, a little strained, a little unusual. It's not usually something that we often come across in traditional massage. And I mean traditional as in more western, like Swedish massage. And then we can knead the shoulder So, I'll wait just a moment. We're going to now be working on your arms. Okay, so let me go ahead and just pull your arm over here. And now I'm going to have the mother hand on your shoulder here, or rather just where your arm meets the shoulder here. And then I'm going to palm press along the outer edge of your shoulder here. And because the arm is quite a bit shorter, than the, than the leg. I don't need to change position and I can keep palm pressing all the way till we get to your palm and if you'll just allow your palm face up then I can press into that. Good. Just palm pressing from the shoulder elbow to the palm. Now I'm going to be working from the mother hand and thumb pressuring, thumb pressing along the heart protector meridian all the way down the essential midline of your arm here all the way down to the middle of your palm then when we work with the hand over here I'm going to be taking your hand and just sliding my pinky under your other fingers while the other pinky comes to open up your thumb here. So this opens up the hand. And from here, we're going to thumb around the palm. Thumb along the fingers. And then we take each finger and we pull a little bit, do a little rotation, and then do a little pulling. And I'm not trying to necessarily pull the finger itself, but rather the arm with each finger. Just going to give your arm a little pull here. Okay, so 
So before we move on to the other arm, I'm just going to move around here and we're going to work on your shoulders a little bit again, okay? So I'm just going to be pressing down on each shoulder, kneading them almost like a cat, kneading the shoulders, opening up the chest, relaxing the shoulders. We can thumb press along the tops of the shoulders as well. And then I can turn my hands so that we can do that kneading and really press your shoulders down. Really relax them. using my body weight to put the perpendicular pressure on your shoulders. Okay, so now I'm going to take my seat and we'll work on the other side. Okay, so we'll take your other arm and just like with your first arm, I'm going to have one hand on your shoulder, one hand that presses along your arm, these firm palm presses. And then we'll take my thumb and then we're just going to be pressing along the heart protector meridian. Each press about two fingers away. Fingertips. All the way down the middle of the palm. Then when we get to the hand, I'm just going to open that up, use my two pinkies to, to open your, your palm a little, and then we'll do our thumb pressing along each meridian here. all the way to the fingers. And then with your fingers, we give them a little rotation. And then we give them a good pull, trying to pull the whole arm as opposed to just the Rotating the fingers, pulling, rotate, pull, rotate, pull, rotate, and pull. Good, 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 good. And we'll give your arm a little pull here. So the next part is going to be working along your face here and in shiatsu we use a cloth over the face so first it's going to be over your eyes but not it's not going to be covering your nose so you can still breathe and then when we move it again it'll be right under the nose so we do this so that we're not running into my fingers being sticky or oily on your face. Helps protect if you have any makeup or skincare on, okay? It's a little more sanitary. Alright, so 
I'm just going to go ahead and come to your front and then we're going to work on your face. just going to be placing this over the face here, okay? And is that impacting your breathing at all? Okay. All right, very good. Okay. So what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to start with my thumbs over your forehead, working from the midline outwards. Going to be pressing down with that perpendicular pressure and working a few passes along the forehead. I get to the temples, then just taking my fingers off and restarting along the midline. Then I'm going to put one of my thumbs on what's known as the yin tang point. And this one is, it's fairly close to where your third eye is, if you can imagine that. So I have one thumb on ying tang and the other comes down to press over top of it. And both of my thumbs pressing down on this point. And then I'll leave one thumb on the point while my other thumb, thumb presses up along your forehead to your hairline and back as far as I can work. I'll do a few passes here, just coming back to the in tongue and then working up from the forehead to the hairline, back as far as I can go. Okay. And now I'm going to press my, the tips of my index fingers in towards the corners of your eyes. So below the eyebrows, right along the bony ridge there, going to just be pressing in along there with both of my index fingers. Be very careful here. We're just going to press into this point. And then I'm going to be pressing down along the corners of your eyebrows. Pressing into this point, that perpendicular pressure. And then I'm going to just turn my hands a little bit. And then I'm going to work up the bladder meridians. So it's just along the midline here. Both sides working from the eyebrow up the forehead, to the hairline, and back. Then I'm going to take my thumbs and this spot that I'm going to press into is the middle of your forehead and the middle of your eyebrows. So if you can imagine that, that's where I'm going to be pressing into your forehead 
And then from there, I'm going to work up the forehead, up to the hairline, and back as far as I can go. Now I'm going to palm and roll my hands along the sides of your face. This is going to be a little bit of an interesting feeling. Looks pretty interesting. So I'm just going to be palming the sides of your face very carefully and rolling my hands outwards as I palm. I'm going to do this a few times along the sides of your face. And then I'm going to press my fingertips right outside of your nostrils, right along the nares there. We're just going to press in. We're going to hang out there for a few seconds. And then from there, I'm going to take my hands and use all of my fingers to follow the line of your upper jaw and press along the cheekbone here. We're going to keep working and pressing. This tends to work the, the jaw quite a bit. Oftentimes, so many of us have so much tension in our jaws and our TMJ joints. And then I'm just going to palm down the side of the face here. And now we're going to be taking our cloth here and now we're going to be just going along the the bottom of the face and we're going to be working underneath the jaw just pressing in along the jaw, underneath the jaw. We're going to do this for just a little bit before we finish off with the neck and the head. take our cloth here and we're going to use it underneath your head. So I'm going to hold your head right on the occiput. With one hand I'm just going to roll your head a little bit. We're going to put the cloth underneath your head and then we're going to go ahead and hold onto your head here. So you'll feel my fingers right along the occiput, along that line in which your skull meets your neck. And then we're just going to be pressing in a little bit, feeling around. Feeling into this area, there's a lot of people that also have a lot of tension in this area, it cause a lot of headaches for some people. We can do a little bit of stretching here, so I'm going to have you take a deep breath in and out. As you exhale, I'm just going to pull your head a little bit. 
Just creating a little space between the head and the neck. Creating some space in the vertebra. Okay. Kneading a little bit here. Just with my fingers. Just with this pressure. Then take a deep breath in for me. And exhale. I stretch your head back. Good, 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 good. Let's do that one more time. And then knead your head. Work with my fingers. And then I'm going to have you take a deep breath in. And out. And stretch your head back. All right, so I'm going to turn your head towards the side here, back to the middle, turn your head the other way, back to the middle, and then we're just going to sit here for a moment with my fingers right at your ox. And we're just going to connect with our breath. Feel ourselves breathing in. Feel ourselves breathing out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. I'm going to turn your head a little bit. And I'm going to take our cloth back. we go. You can set your head there and you can just, you can just take a moment to come back to the world and I will see you in just a moment, okay? All right. All right. How was that? Pretty enjoyable. I hope that was very relaxing very calming, very soothing. Is there anything else I can do for you? Okay. Thank you so much for coming to this shiatsu appointment with me. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a 